Okay. Now we're going to backpedal a little bit to our mean and standard deviation stuff. What does that all tell us? Well, to understand what that tells us, remember we talked about distribution. And we said that in nature, data tends to be distributed in this bell curve thing. Well, that one's a little uneven, but oh well. And we said that that normal curve, that bell curve, the mean, median, and mode, if it was a perfectly normally distributed set of data, the mean, median, and mode would all be right at the center. And we said the spread or the standard deviation describes how wide that is. And it actually, it, it's very, very distinct and very, very predictable on how it describes how wide it is. So if this middle number is the mean, you know, it could be called the median or the mode, it doesn't matter, but generally we use the mean to label that one when we're talking about this. If we move down one standard deviation, so minus one standard deviation from the mean, we expect, now there's two different versions of this. What I'm going to talk about is something called the empirical rule. There's an approximate empirical rule which most textbooks use. This textbook chooses to use the exact empirical rule, which is kind of a pain, but it's a little bit more precise. But between the mean and one standard deviation below the mean, the, the approximate empirical rule just says 34%. Your textbook says 34.13% of the data is expected to be in that range. If we go down another standard deviation, so now we're two standard deviations, so minus two standard deviations below the mean. Between the one and the two standard deviations, we expect to find 13.59% of the data. And from two to three standard deviations, we expect to find 2.15% of the data. And below, Three standard deviations. Give me a second. We'll go back and I'll fill in some numbers. I'll make this a little bit more clear. So less than three, you know, further down than three standard deviations below the data, we expect to only find 0.13%. And going the other way, it's the same. One standard deviation above. So between the mean and that is 34.13%. From one to two standard deviations above, we're expecting that 13.59%. From two to three, 2.15 again. And more than three, we are expecting to have 0.13%. So, what does all this mean? I can almost hear the, huh, coming from the group. Well, let's say that, let's say that all students that take this class, the mean grade is 84 out of 100. So the standard deviation of Let's go to the six. What that is saying is if I look at this curve, now these percents that I just filled in here never ever change. Those percents are constant. What changes is the mean and standard deviation. So the mean of 84 means the middle of this distribution is 84. The standard deviation of six means when I go down a standard deviation, I subtract six. What's 84 minus six? 78, right? What's 78 minus another six? 72. 72 minus another six? 
66. Okay, now let's go the other way. Starting at 84, what's 84 plus 6? 90 plus another 6? 96 and plus another 6? 102, good. Believe it or not, I have had students score more than 100% in this class. I had a student a couple years ago I had to pick on because they were running like 104% in the class going into the final test. So I had to pick on them. Well, no matter what you get on the final test, it's going to drop your percentage. <laughs> Even a perfect score with 104 goes down. Right? So anyway, what does this mean? Well, that means that we expect between, for, between 78 and 84, we expect 34.13% of students be, to be between 78 and 84 for their grade. Bless you. Between 90 and 96, we expect 13.59% of the students between, to be between those two scores. Between 96 and 102%. We expect only 2.15% of students to be between those two scores. Less than 78. If we add all those up, that comes out to 15.87%. We expect only 15.87% of the students to be below 78. Bless you. And like I said, those percents are the same. What changes are these numbers down here based on what our mean and standard deviation are. So let me show you another example of this. Let's say you decide you want to buy a new home. You want to buy a three bedroom, two bath home. And you do your research. And when you're doing your research, you find that in this area, the mean cost of a two-bedroom, three-bathroom home is $118,000. With a standard deviation of so $18,000. That's where you'd have to calculate the standard deviation or be given the standard deviation. Remember, the standard deviation is what we calculated where you had the six-step process. Yes. Yep. So for something like this, you would have to be given. You'd have to look up what the standard deviation of home sale so prices are. Like looking at like 10 homes or whatever and giving that average and that's where you got your standard um, You'd actually have to look at a lot more than that. You'd have to look at, oh. to get an accurate standard deviation, you'd look at all homes sold in the last four or five years. Um, there's when you get up, talking to statistics there are a lot of factors to consider like a few years ago not that long ago they were only using numbers from like the last two years because there was that huge drop in home prices in 2008 2009 yeah the housing crisis well if you went back more than just a couple years you were getting into those inflated prices before the big price drop well, you didn't want to include those in there because home values weren't really worth that much. To be honest, they weren't worth that much back then either. And people were just willing to pay that much. So you have to, if there's a major change in the market, you have to adjust the window that you're looking at. But assuming that home prices have been relatively consistent for the last five or six years, you'd want to go back probably four or five, six years and get the average and standard deviation for all those homes sold in that area. So that would be like in, in a certain neighborhood also? So we're yep. looking at... Okay. Yeah, you wouldn't want to look at, okay, here is the very, very expensive neighborhood, and then here's the, the working class neighborhood, here's the, you know, the kind of the, a lot of trailer courts and all that stuff mixed in this neighborhood or whatever, high crime neighborhood, or right next to a school is going to be different. I mean, there's a lot of different factors that come in that affect home values. So you want to decide this is the type of neighborhood I want to live in and then look at just that neighborhood. It's called uh, avoiding extraneous variables. I mean, there's a lot of variables that come in. Uh, if a new factory just went in next door, it's gonna drop the home values because of noise and whatever. 
living next door to a bar compared to living next door to a school is going to affect your home values. So I went out of the room for a second, and where it said the empirical rule was that, where you're talking about the bell curve? That's this bell curve and these percents we're talking about. Yeah. So it's always going to be that. It's just whatever you're into. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to draw my bell curve again. I'm trying to draw it a little bit bigger this time. Now these percents never change. This is going to be 34.13% here and here. This is going to be 13.59% here and here. This is going to be 2.15% here and here. And 0.13% here and here. What numbers are going to go down along the bottom? Well, it's easiest to start in the middle. What's going to go in the middle? The 118,000. The mean always goes in the middle. Now, I'm just going to write 118. I'm just going to leave the zeros off for the rest of this just to make it a little simpler. As I go down, what number would go here? 100,000. How do I get 100,000? Well, it's my mean of 118,000 minus a single standard deviation of 18,000. That's going to be 100,000 there. I'll put the zeros in to avoid confusion. This next one's going to be 82,000 because I subtracted another 18,000, another standard deviation. What's this last one going to be? 64,000. Going the other way, what number is going to go here? 136,000. There I'm taking my mean of 118,000 and I'm adding the standard deviation of 18,000. What's going to go here? 154,000. I'm adding another standard deviation, another 18,000. And then finally here, 172,000. So now let's say that you are looking at these homes and you find a home that you absolutely love. It's $154,000. And your realtor is putting the pressure on you, saying you need to put you need to put in an offer at that price. It's except their selling price right now. Um, this house isn't going to stick around very long. Well, looking at this, one hundred fifty-four thousand dollars is right here. But that is telling us, if I add up all these percents here that are below it, this is the less than side here that I circled in purple. If I add up all these percents, that's going to add up to 97.72%. What that is telling me is 97.72% of all of the three-bedroom, two-bathroom homes that have sold in that area recently have sold for less than 156000 or $154,000. So do you think there's a good chance you're going to find a house that's cheaper that you still like? Yeah, 97.72% of them have been cheaper. Hopefully in that 97%, you can find one you like. That's a great tip. Well, I mean, it applies to everything. If you're looking at taking a job, um, you want to look at your starting salary or whatever, and you compare it to starting salaries of other people in the area. This tells you where you fall on that curve. You can get it right down to percents. Now, the problem is, of course, if the number doesn't fall exactly on a standard deviation, it's a little tough. Let's say you find a house that is marked $130,000. Well, 
Well, $130,000 falls somewhere in here. Well, you know that 50% of the houses, it's, it's higher than half. You know, 50% of the houses are cheaper than that. But you don't really know what the, how this 34% is split up within that range. I will say that that comes out to be at least like 72% or still less than that number. Generally, you want to stay less than one standard deviation above the mean if you're, if you're looking at spending money. Um, if you go more than one standard deviation above the mean, puts you at a spot where 84.13% are less than that. You know, that even sounds like you're getting a little steep, but you know, you, because there's so much in the middle here, you can't get very far away from the middle without having big numbers added on to the 50%. Of course, the middle, if you bought a house that was priced at the mean of $118,000, what percent of the houses would be cheaper than that? Half, right? 50%. Half of the houses would be cheaper than the mean. Half of the houses would be more expensive if this is a normally distributed set of data. 